Hello everybody. This video is going to show you how the show management library works, how to make use of it, and how to extend it. It will not cover the tools or process for how to produce a show. That will be made available in a separate tutorial linked in the description below once created. What you see here is a scene created using the show management library and is available in the awesome repository. I'd like to begin by diving into the show management library, which is also available on GitHub. Here you can find documentation for how to make use of it in your scene. I'd like to go over some of the main components that you will be using. The first thing I'd like to do is focus on how the show management library syncs actions to videos. This is not a trivial thing to do, which is why the library was created. There is a class called the Show Manager, and it will handle all of this complicated things for you. But I think it's worth taking a closer look at how it works. To be able to synchronize actions to videos at a subsecond level, a few things need to happen. First, we need to know the status of the video playing. This is what the on video event helps us with. It provides information about videos that are being played in your scene. Uh, information that it can provide is, was there an error? Is it loading? Is it ready? Is it buffering? Or is it playing? The playing event will provide current offset for where in the video it is being played. This information by itself seems like it would be all we need to be able to sync actions to videos. However, it's not precise enough. The event only fires maybe once a second, and if we wanted to fire things at a more precise level, we need a second component. This is where the video system comes in. The video system makes use of the SDK on update, which gives us delta time at a much better precision point. So how does this all work together? The show manager, uh, you will call play video or start video, and that initializes a video system, which then subscribes to the on video event. From there, the on video event will notify the video system if and when the video is playing. If the video is not playing, the video system does not increment uh, video offset at all. If the video is playing, it will start incrementing the on update delta that the SDK provides using the current on play video offset time. Combining these two gives us enough information at a sub-second precision level to know where in the video we are. Once we have that, we're ready for synchronizing actions, and that's what the subtitle system does. The subtitle system is given a list of cues. Cues are provided to the subtitle system in a format called SRT. SRT is the most, one of the most common file formats used for processing subtitles overlaid on videos. Instead of overlaying text with videos, we're making use of this to orchestrate when an action should fire in relation to where a video is in its offset. You can see here what an SRT format looks like. It has a block of text which is sequencing ascending. It has a time slice for which it is valid and then the text which would be your subtitle. However, in our case, instead of it being a subtitle, it is a list of actions. Going back to our class diagram, Actions are handled by the Show Action Manager. The Show Action Manager subscribes to the subtitle system and is notified when a cue has become valid for the current offset in the video. The Show Action Manager will be the mediator between the subtitle system and your scene. The Show Action Manager has many Show Action handlers registered to it. Some are provided by the library and some will be created by you. The job of the show action handlers are to decide if it can act on the action sent to it from the subtitle system. It does this by implementing a matches method. This matches method decides whether or not it can act or not. Let's jump over to the show management scene to better understand how show action handlers work. Here you can see in the demo show subs a SRT format which describes which action should fire and when. For example, 
right at the very beginning of the show, we are going to say, let's, we are going to announce some text that's going to say, welcome to our show for a duration of three seconds. To understand how the announce action from a SRT subtitle file makes it into a handler, first we have to visit the show action manager. When it receives a call from the subtitle system to run an action, it checks against all known registered action handlers. And if an action handler uh, is deemed that it can match the action, which you can see here, it'll say, it'll first check, does this handler match the action? It will then execute the handler, in which case it will call handler.execute. Looking at the announce handler, its implementation of matches just checks to see if it's if the defined action starts with its name, hand, announce, and in this case it does. So from there, uh, matches is true and it will call handler.execute. You will notice that this announce does not implement execute, but that is because it extends a support class to try to abstract away some of the more complicated things. Execute will call decode action, which tries to parse the command into a more usable format, followed by process. So let's take a look over here. Uh, this particular handler does not implement parse or decode action either. That's because it's making use of the default one. In this case, decode action makes use of a helper called parse actions with options. And its expected format is action name, text followed by no spaces uh, for your arguments. So you can have argument one, two, three, four, as many as you like, followed by a JSON file. So it's going to parse this and return back to you an action parameter object, which will have the array of arguments. And if it was, if a JSON file or JSON string was passed in this case, it'll be inside of params. And that's what gets passed by, from execute. And you can see that when execute calls decode, it receives the decoded params and it passes that to process. Visiting the announce handler, you can see process receives those action parameters, in which case it can now make use of them. So it can say action, the action.parameters.text and action parameters dot duration, which is defined by this type here. And it can do whatever it needs to. In this case, it's calling ui.displayAnnounce. Let's see this in action. I'm gonna hop over to the show management example scene and make a change to the announce subtitle, which will reload the scene and start the show in a few seconds. We should see the announce fire right away because it starts at the beginning of the show. Taking this one step further, I'd like to show how you can override an action handler. So in my example scene show management scene, uh, I'm going to take the show manager, fetch its registered handlers. I'm going to get the announce handler that's already defined, and I'm going to override its process method, allowing me to redefine how it operates. You could also, if you didn't want to um, override the process, you could just register a completely new handler with the same name and it'll override it. So if I make this change, we should see when the show starts, it'll add my new functionality to it. This is just the beginning of how you can create, customize, and modify handlers to integrate with your show. Looking back at the major components that you will be interested in, we've covered how the video system and subtitle system work together, how the show action manager will handle processing actions, how show manager orchestrates all of this. The last component of interest is the run of show system. The run of show system will receive a, a configuration of various shows that you want to run, including the subtitle file, a video, artist name, title, and its start time. From there, the system will decide what time a show should start. You can see in this example scene here, if I was to reload, 
the run of show is executing and deciding that the demo show starts and when. Here you can see an example of a show schedule. Here we are listing each individual show with its title, artist, video, subtitles, when it starts and how long it is. From there, the run of show system will decide when it's time to play each show in order. And that's it, covering the major components the show manager library has and how it works from the inside. I suggest that you check out the documentation page as it may cover some other details that I did not cover. Things such as how to register for events such as when the show is stopped, when it is played, and when the status of the video changes. Thank you for listening and happy building.